Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Julianos, the only show on YouTube every week where you can ask your questions to a medical doctor who is also a champion bodybuilder. It's brought to you by his awesome, huge, very informative book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, available on Amazon. Everything you need to know about it, training, nutrition, supplementation, and of course, PEDs, including cycles and drug profiles, all that good stuff while you're on Amazon. Go ahead and pick up Real Bodybuilding by Ron Harris. What a great book. And now all the way from Athens, Greece, where it's past 8 o'clock at night right now. Please welcome Dr. George Tulianos. Hey, George. Hey, Ron. What's going on? Too much. So uh, I had some blood work done this week. I thought we'd kick off with that. I didn't do the, the hormone panel I do with Frontline Alternative through Andre's company, but this is my regular primary care doctor. So let's take a look. I want, to, I want people to know that I'm not dying. And up front, my cycle is, because they're going to know, 240 milligrams of tefcipionate a week, 100 milligrams of nandrolone decanate a week, and twice a week I take 25 milligrams of anastrozole, a uh, aromatase inhibitor. So, I mean, quarter of a, of a milligram, quarter of a milligram. Right, yeah, a quarter of a milligram. Yeah. Is that a standard dose? No, well, the standard dose is one milligram, and I guess you can... Oh, wow. So it's 20, 250 micrograms. It's one fourth a quarter. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. So I'm not overdosing on that. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so my labs are right here. Uh, so it starts off with the metabolic panel. Again, I didn't do the hormones because I do the hormones through yeah. my uh Obviously, creatinine is not bad. Creatinine is not bad, considering your body mass index, the fact that you're using creatinine monohydrate, meat, red meat. Yeah. Um so I want to say it's risk. 1.3 is fine for a bodybuilder. Okay. Um, EGFR is 68. Yeah, well, GFR is kind of low, but it comes to creatinine, right? And also, uh, age is another factor plus creatinine. So I guess, Ron, if you downsize and yeah. if you quit on, on red meat and creatinine monohydrate, perhaps your creatinine may go down to 1.1, and okay. then your GFR will go up. Okay. So, yeah, these are all, I mean, if, if it's the blue dot here, those are all inside the reference ranges. So my bun creatinine ratio is okay. That's at 18. Sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, protein total, albumin, all that looks good. The only thing we start getting into uh, danger signs is my alkaline phosphatase is low. Uh, it's 33. Yeah. We don't care about that much, but I mean, it's up when you break a bone and when you, when children catch up in height in puberty, but also it's part of the cholestatic enzymes. But what I want to mention is your liver enzyme is nothing bad with it. It's because of, your, uh, of the fact you train. So I don't say you have rhabdomyolysis, but mm. uh, this implies that you're an active guy. Besides, listen, Liver enzymes below 50 are not considered in, in medicine as something pathological. You know, we don't we don't put, pay attention that much to such a low levels of, uh, okay, good. of liver enzymes, okay? Yeah, because it's... Our HDL is low because of your testosterone and DECA use. Hmm. I would say um, if you quit on DECA and you lower a little bit your, your testosterone, then HDL might rise. Yeah. You no? Know? And if you quit also on, on aromatase inhibitor because the fact you're gonna low you're gonna lower your testosterone, then is another reason why it still will go up. Yeah. Now they want to see it could be better because 5.5 is where the ring bells and Thomas says the same. You don't need to have to go to six percent. So 5.5 means you're during perhaps off season, you may lower your carbs, you may get leaner. And even though you don't want to do that, start taking even metformin, berberine, and chromium, you okay. know, to improve your insulin sensitivity. Perhaps go for starchy carbs, brown rice, and sweet potato instead of uh, hyperglycemic carbs and increase your fiber, okay? Yeah, I, I eat white rice every day, white rice. Oh, yeah. I don't like brown rice. <laughs> so let's see, anything else? So, I believe uh, TSH could be below two if you want to give a kick you may take some selenium 200 micrograms for your tsh yeah or i should be below two if you want to get it optimized that's the uh tsh is thyroid function 
Yes, okay. the base thermostat, yeah. Now about PSA, make sure you don't have sex for three days before checking out. Wow. But yet, 2.4 is within the, 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 the range of your age, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but it, it's lower when you don't um, have sex for three days or ride in the bike, you know? I had, so this was a Thursday morning, they drew my blood, and I had sex on Wednesday morning, so that's what screwed it up. Damn it. <laughs> well, now I know. You still get late, huh? Good. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I'm trying. I try for twice, twice, twice a week. That's my, uh, that's my schedule these days. So, okay, cool. All right. I appreciate you uh, checking that out, Doc. Of course. Okay. So uh, let's get into your questions, you readers, you viewers. And remember, if you have questions, put them here in the comments below. So the first one for this week is, does a nandrolone only, that's commonly called DECA, DECA, Durablin, nandro, nandrolone only cycle make sense for women? Yeah, they can, I mean, they don't use testosterone, so you do um, a monotherapy, let's say, or of Primo or DECA. Uh, yes, they can use 50 milligrams per week, I would say. Okay. It's a fair enough dose. Yeah. I mean, they don't have to worry about the same issues as men with uh, libido issues and all that. So, yeah. Yeah, women, I mean, they know testosterone is not the main hormone, you know, so we care about not to pass on estrogens. Anyway, DECA, yeah, go for 50 milligrams per week is uh, um, a very safe dose. Okay, cool. Next one is what is the recommended percentage of estradiol to total testosterone? And what's the best thing to take for high SHBG, 80 to 100? How much will Primabolin lower the SHB in estradiol? So I would say one out of one, one to 20, the ratio, which is 5%. Okay. I mean, a 1,000 a thousand of uh, total testosterone would be good to have 50 over a dollar, or even 100. Some people that say one-tenth, others say 120, mm. 5 or 10%. But it's proportional, okay? Don't panic if a dollar is 62. Mm. Your uh, testosterone is 1100, okay? Yeah. And besides, you have to know that those ranges are for people, for, for people, natty people who don't use testosterone. When you use testosterone, it aromatizes and it converts to estradiol. More testosterone, more estradiol. And when you block the estrogens in bodybuilding, you increase the other metabolite, okay, the DHT. But it's not, I mean, also bodybuilders use superficial dose, which are not considered as, as those the medical prescribed, the, the, you know, the optimized doses. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, because my estradiol, when, without that medication, without the Arimidex, mine's around 200. It's it's too high, I think. Yeah, I guess, but when you use 250 milligrams of testosterone, I bet you have 2,000 nanograms. Uh, I think it was like 1,500. I, I, I actually need to get that done again soon for a uh, frontline alternative. Yeah, but that's a... Uh, yeah, How about I, Primo is a DHT derivative. It acts like DHT. It doesn't act like aromatase inhibitor, so it doesn't block estrogen, but it has a uh, slight anisogenic activity. All right. Yeah. Uh, it definitely lowers uh, SHBG, but the point is when you lower SHBG, the free testosterone goes high that will convert to estrogen because it's the active form of testosterone. So it's tricky saying that if you use a DHT derivative, you're going to have a better sex drive, but as the SHBG goes down, free testosterone goes up, it will convert to estrogen, all right? So only the aromatase inhibitor will lower the dial. Mm. I'm not sure that Mastron or Winchell or Anavar or, I mean, or Primo will lower the E2 as the AIs do. Okay. And uh, you've said this before, but what's the best thing to take if your SHB is very high? The DHC derivatives. DHC derivatives. Okay. Viral master. Okay. Now they would say that uh, anabar may be an indirect indication for this. Yes, if you don't have the other compounds, like in the U.S., you guys don't have uh, proviron. Right. Right. So you may say that yes, we can use oxandrolone for the sake of high SHBG. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Last drug-related question. What are the differences between Nolvidex and Arimidex? When and why would you use them? Uh, different compounds. Arimidex is um, an estrogen blocker, is an aromatase inhibitor. It cuts off the aromatase enzyme that produces estrogens in first place. While Nolvidex doesn't cut off the estrogens, it just occupies a receptor 
tamoxifen or clomiphene work. It's more part in the tamoxifen, the Novadex. Yeah. So it sits, let's say, on the chair where the floating estrogens want to go and sit on the receptor. Okay, so by using Novadex, Novadex you have the benefit um, that you don't cut off the estrogen, the circulating estrogens is more healthy in the terms of the HDL or LDL. Um, and it's preferable to be used when giant is already established and have a pain in the uh, painless nipple over here, you know? Yeah. That protrudes. While Arimidex, you use it in first place before the synthesis of estrogens, you know? Um, and of course, you, you need to, when you have giant, you need to check out. Yes, you need to check out B2 and the prolactin, but uh, it's way more effective the the serums. Now, Remidex may have side effects to the bone, to the HDL, to the endothelium if it's abused, okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, we got a final question. You and I both love to talk about training. This is a medical show. We talk about supplements, drugs, but training is our passion. You love to train. I love to train. And this is the argument that's been going on for 50, 60, 70 years. How many times per week should we train a muscle group for optimal growth? What do you think? Well, I asked that meal was last year in uh, or two years ago in Dubai. You know, he, he has his perception that there's no such overtraining. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Jay says, uh, and Dorian also says, uh, every five days or every seven days. Hmm. Because you need to bust your ass, you know, and, and uh, kill your muscle group, punish it in order to have a whole week able to recover. You know, they say that muscle grows in the kitchen and in the bedroom. Yeah. Um, uh, some other people like Ronnie Coleman said when I had stubborn, let's say calves, I used to train them, not calves, uh, I don't know, chest, I used to train them twice a week. Yeah. Twice a week literally means every five days. I think so. When you train uh, five times a week, you know, no. Monday to Friday. Well, I think because Ronnie did every body part twice a week, so he yeah. would train. He did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He takes Sunday off, so he would hit. So if he hit chest on a Monday, again, he would hit, he would hit again on Tuesday. He would hit again on Thursday. So wow. I, yeah, he did that. And that, but that's that's what I want to ask because Dorian did muscle groups once a week. Ronnie did them twice a week. Arnold did them twice a week. I think maybe, did he do the oh, yeah, Arnold, Arnold. Well, Arnold was, uh, I mean, he was training like a minute, five times, uh, five hours a day, while uh, Mike Major said, just train three hours per week. Right. Uh, look at the results, you know. But Major was doing uh, half a minute the concentric, one minute the eccentric, you know, it was super slow. Um, well, let me ask you from your experience, have you made better gains training a muscle group once a week or twice a week? You know, if I have to train twice a week, I need to train at least five to six times a week. And literally, I don't have the time to do that. Mm -hmm. But when I'm working as a doctor, when I was, I mean, when I was able to have plenty of time, yes, I would do that. But listen, it requires gear, sleep, food, supplements to recover. Otherwise, you're breaking down your body. So I don't believe this is for amateur or for natty people. Right, right. You need to have all the stock. Otherwise, you're not able to recover from this inflammation. You're yeah. breaking down your body. Yeah, I mean, steroids, one of the most useful things about steroids is they, they aid in the recovery and the repair of the muscle tissue much faster. So I guess... I don't believe wrong that all those diets and the training programs in flex and muscle mag and muscular development refer to natty people. Come on. No, I mean, unfortunately, that's what a lot of natty people do is they copy Mr. Olympia's training routine because that's Mr. Olympia. I want to look like that. But Mr. Olympia is on all kinds of stuff and he's sleeping 10 hours a day and he doesn't have a job where he's stressed out or anything or, you know, it's a different ballgame. But uh, you've heard, you know, Somilos makes that argument. You've also heard this from people saying. Uh, yeah. calves. I remember Gaspar told me he was training calves every day. Yeah, because the, calves are they have red muscle fibers that slope to each, you know, like the, the, the forearms that are very stubborn and they need plenty of reps 15 to 20 yeah. with heavy load. So it's different part, like abs the same, mm -hmm. but the larger muscle groups, you know, back, legs, right? I believe they need it. I mean, of 
course, you need more sets. The point is, how fast are you able to recover from 20 sets of back or 30 sets of, of legs? We used to split legs, rear legs and front legs, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, when you were younger, when I was younger, my legs would stay sore for a week, a whole week. Too, yes. So there's no way I was going to train them three twice a week because they'd still be sore. So, you know, I think it comes down to listening to your body. If you're somebody who can recover very well, sleep, eat, no, no stress in your life. Mess up your routine. You know, Monday chest again, Friday chest. Don't miss a workout. This is uh, it requires discipline and uh, plenty of, of uh, spare time. You no. Know? Yeah. Well, I'm curious because you train less now because you don't have the time. When you were younger, well, you listen. I mean, my body cannot uh, undergo the same stress as it used to be. I mean, year by year, you feel your joints, you feel your strength. Yeah. I don't want to use more testosterone, you know. So I don't, I don't care that much. I don't want to stay lean. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but finally, yes, I mean, I have some soreness over here. It's the supraspinatus, you know. Yeah, but I mean, you stay, you stay very, very lean now. You stay, you could be like competition shape within, I'd say like three, four weeks at any point. That's how close you stay. Oh, now. Perhaps here, this year, perhaps eight weeks. I'm a little bit more smooth. Eight weeks. Huh? But, um, I don't want to push you, you know, to have an injury. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, injuries. You know, you had that back injury. It was your back? You had yeah, surgery. I was, I was killing myself during the quarantine. You know. Yeah. Was that during quarantine you were doing all that? During the quarantine, I was. I had the injury. Yeah, 2021. Yeah, you, you were squatting in your backyard by the pool, I think, right? Yeah, I was squatting at uh, 350 and 40 years old. It's a stupid thing to do, you know. No spotter, I'm sure, right? <laughs> oh, never. Hell no. <laughs> Uh, you're living on the edge, doctor, living on the edge. Okay, well, that's all the questions we have for this week. Guys, please subscribe, like, share, do all that good stuff. Helps us out with the channel. Let me change that banner. Yeah, get that up there. Uh, wrong line report. Oh, here we go. So questions for next week, guys, please leave them below for the doctor. Uh, comments, anything. we like to hear your feedback. We're very, very fortunate to have access to Dr. T, who is a medical doctor and a champion bodybuilder. You don't have access to many people like this in the whole world. So thank you, doctor. We're very, very fortunate that you're with us. So support the show. Support the doc with his book. There's a lot of knowledge in here. You can teach yourself a very, very large amount of you can, you can become a not an expert, but very well versed in a lot of subjects. Because this is 700 pages right here, guys. So check it out. Anyway, thank you, doctor. Appreciate you so much. And everybody, thanks for watching. Ask Dr. Testosterone. We will see you 